Before we start, if you're interested in a new pair of headphones, the Mass Drop and Hi-Fi Man HE350s are back for a limited time. I reviewed these back in April and absolutely love them, and you can get them for under $100. And by the way, they usually retail for $300. You're saving over $200. bucks. i will put the link to the drop in the description down below. What's up guys, I'm Random Frank P. Today I'm excited because in my hands, I have the GTX 1080 Hall of Fame graphics card from Galax. And yes, as you all know me, I am in love with the looks of this GPU. After all, I used the 980 and the 980 Ti Hall of Fame card in my previous PC before I moved. This time we have the card in a 1080 release, and I'll tell you guys all about it and do some benchmarks in this video. First off, this card is a limited run, as most of their Hall of Fame products are. You can expect to pick this up for $69.99, and you probably won't be finding this on Amazon or anything like that soon, due to its rarity. Inside the box, you get the typical inclusions like some paperwork, drivers on a disc, yada yada yada. You have the card itself, which is in that signature eye-catching white with silver accents throughout. And first impressions, not only is this card sexy, but it is huge. Seriously, it's massive, even larger than the 980 Ti version of this card. This comes in at 317 millimeters and weighs just over 3 pounds. Yeah, it's a behemoth. And actually, since it is so large, they even include a support stick. Now this thing is interesting, and it's obviously meant to keep your card from sagging, but I'll show more off on this in a little bit. Back to the card itself, let's talk about its physical features and specs. The 1080 Hall of Fame has three fans on the bottom of the card to keep temps down, and actually it was pretty quiet when I was gaming. I was pretty surprised. The back side of the card facing your motherboard will have a subtle HOF logo. And on the reverse side, facing out of your case is actually the Hall of Fame typeface that will light up when powered on. On top of the card is a nice nickel backplate. Not only does that hide the PCB, it helps support the card as well and just looks really nice. It complements the look of the card as well with the silver accents throughout. So definitely one of the best looking graphics cards available right now I'd say. Now as for the connectors, we have one DVI, three display ports, and an HDMI slot as well. One thing here you'll see is a spring-loaded button, and this is actually familiar and was featured on past Hall of Fame cards, but what this does is it acts as a GPU boost. Pretty much you press this in and the card's fans will ramp up to 100% instantly and will let you get more out of it like when overclocked. Then as for the more important things, the 1080 Hall of Fame has a base clock speed of 1809 MHz and a boost clock speed of 1961, which is actually some of the highest speeds out there for 1080s on the market. And for comparison, the reference 1080s have a core clock of only 1607, so we're getting a pretty big jump here. We have GDR5 memory, 2506 CUDA cores, you see the graphic. Now moving on, I resurrected my old H440 build and put this beast inside of that. And it wasn't easy, it actually barely fits. The PCIe connectors were actually touching the frame of the case, where things like the memory bay and such is hidden behind that panel there. But I did manage to squeeze it in, but it was a very tight fit. And man does it look nice. Everything inside my H440 with the white accents on my hardware is complemented nicely by this card. Really can't get over how nice it looks visually. Now like I mentioned earlier, when the card is powered on, we have some visual flair. The front facing Hall of Fame logo lights up white and it's actually pretty subtle, but it's still a nice touch nonetheless. And we also have this random blue LED out the right side. I assume you can disable it in the NVIDIA software. I didn't try to though because I liked the way it looked at night, but I did want to point that out. Now let's get to benchmarking and you'll notice on the graphic that I'm going to show, of either the DX11 or 12 pointed out there for the game, as well as an average FPS comparison with the GPU boost enabled. So let's get into that. I didn't want to draw up benchmarks too much, so you saw the results with the four modern games that we used that I think do a pretty good job of showing what a card is capable of. 
from the vast and open world of GTA 5, the crazy good graphics and gameplay with Battlefield 1, which I've been loving, and the ever so intensive Ashes of the Singularity, I think it handled it all very well, I thought, and even exceeded my expectations in most cases in the games I was playing. Now, I didn't do any manually overclocking or anything like that because, you know, my specs are going to be different from yours, so I didn't feel it was really necessary to include that since it's all going to differ from build to build. But I did point out when you have the GPU boost enabled, the increase in frames, and I'd say we saw an average of 3 to 5 frames of an increase maybe, which I didn't think was too bad at all. Now one thing I showed off at the beginning was that white baton, which is their support stick here, which can expand and all that stuff. The point of this is to mount it to your GPU and use it to fit from the top to the bottom of your case to hold the graphics card up. Now it does come with some mounting gear, so you can actually mount it to the front of your card if you want, but I'm not a fan of that since you're going to have just this large stick in the front, you know, staring at you at the front of the panel. But you can also mount it on the right side here, which I think in most cases is going to be hidden behind the panel, and it's actually what I did. But if you have hard drives themselves or even hard drive cages inside your PC, odds are this is going to be a problem since the card is just so long, it's going to be towards the back right side of your case, which is where that stuff is which could make using the support stick a big issue. I think what would have been a better idea would be if you shrunk this thing down to like a tenth of its actual size and use it to actually prop up the car from the bottom of the case or from the power supply shroud. But hey, it's whatever. I like my idea better. So altogether, this card is awesome. I love the way it looks with that unique white and silver design. Really makes it stand out from the rest of the aftermarket cards. It handled all the games I threw at it flawlessly, and temperatures were pretty cool. And overall, the card was a lot quieter than I expected. I did talk about that GPU boost button, and that's obviously going to make the card louder. For example, this is the noise when playing with it off. And this is it enabled. So for $6.99, you're getting one of the most unique and powerful cards on the market right now. And I just wish my iBuyPower PC could fit this inside, which is probably the biggest con or downfall to this card, is that it just might not fit in most cases out there. Even most uh, full towers might need some modification with like a Dremel or something. I think overall though, I may need to do a resurrection and a full rebuild with a new version of my old Glacier PC featuring this Hall of Fame card. Well guys, that'll do it for my review and benchmarking of the sexy GTX 1080 Hall of Fame graphics card from Galax. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, please give this video a big thumbs up to show your support. Feel free to follow me on Twitter, at RandomFrankP. And lastly, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Well, I'm RandomFrankP. Hope you enjoyed. Have a good day.